Hello everyone. In today's review session, we will be going over Deep Ant, which is an um, which is a deep learning based anomaly detection approach. Now, before we go into the details of um, the way Deep Ant works, let us um, try to understand what anomalies are. Anomalies or generally outliers are those data points in a sample space which are abnormal or out of trend. Now, the question is, how would you define something to be abnormal or an outlier? The answer is simple. Um, if you were to think of it mathematically, these can be data points which are not in the same trend as data points in its neighborhood. Now, a little bit about Deep Ant. Deep Ant is uh, a novel deep learning based anomaly detection approach for time series data, which is capable, uh, which is equally ap applicable to non streaming cases. DeepAnt is capable of detecting a wide range of anomalies, such as point anomalies, contextual anomalies, and discards in time series data. In contrast to the anomaly detection methods where anomalies are learned, DeepAnt uses unlabeled data to capture and learn the data distribution that is used to forecast the normal behavior of a time series. DeepAnt basically has two modules, a time series predictor and an anomaly detector. The time series predictor um, uses deep, deep convolutional neural networks to um, predict the next timestamp on the defined horizon. Now, this module takes a window of time series used as context and attempts to predict the next timestamp. Now, the predicted value is then sent to an anomaly detector module, which uh, tags the corresponding timestamp as either normal or abnormal. Now, let us take a look at um, an uh, implementation of deep ant. So the code that has been used in this notebook uh, is available at this GitHub link. This GitHub link also has the data set that we are using for this um, for the implementation of deep ant. It is the Canadian climate history data, and the paper on which the deep ant is inspired is uh, also provided here. You can even take a look at the Medium article here, which um, describes um, Deep Ant. Now to start off, the first step is to import all the necessary libraries. Um, we will mainly be using um, PyTorch here for um, so the torch library for our um, deep learning based model. Now, um, coming to the data pre-processing. So um, after reading the data from the file, we um, convert the index of the data, which is originally a date into timestamp as it helps in better analysis because we are looking at um, whether uh, a particular timestamp is an anomaly or not. So it, it helps in analyzing this better if, if it is converted to this form. Now, once we have done this, we will normalize the data such that it is between zero and one, Mod, um, modifying the data set um, includes time steps as one more dimension. And the purpose of doing data pre-processing is to convert the data set of um, dimension, which is batch size and number of features to batch size, look back size and features. Now um, we will uh, be building the deep and um, architecture. It typically contains two layers of convolution and is and it is very efficient in determining anomalies with temporal patterns of data. 
the kernel size and number of filters can be adjusted depending on the data. And to know more about the architecture of DPANT, you can take a look at this paper. This is the link to the same paper that I mentioned earlier. Here in this um, architecture, they have used um, two convolutional layers followed by max pooling. And they have added uh, a dropout and finally a fully connected layer. Now, moving on to the model training, we uh, here this particular module is used to create the iterator, which can provide data in uh, mini batches to the computation model. Here, the computation model is our deep learning model. And the loss function that we are using here is mean squared error. And it is passed to the main train step function, which is basically um, training the model, used for training the model. And the optimizer that we are uh, using here for loss function optimization is Adam. Now coming to the computation step, um, this computation step is used for um, finding the anomaly um, using model-based computation. Now what we do is we first run the model through data in multiple mini batches, and we use um, mean squared error loss function along with Adam optimizer, and we are running this for a total of 30 epochs. After this, we are generating the hypotheses and calculating the losses, which, uh, which are basically the anomaly confidence scores for individual timestamps given in the data set. The author of the um, Medium article um, seems to have tried um, implementing uh, using two different models. So they have used um, LSTM and DeepAnt for anomaly detection. But here we are focusing mainly on DeepAnt. Now at every epoch, we are printing out the training losses that we have computed using mean squared error. And we can see that the deep learning model is doing a fairly good job um, in, uh, re in reducing the training loss. Now, the next step is, of course, to make some visualizations. Here we have um, two particular visualizations. One is the frequency distribution of the anomaly confidence scores. And the other one is anomaly confidence score versus the timestamp. Now, we can see that um, from the, we can see that the Timestamps which have an anomaly confidence score of more than 1.2 are those which can be treated as potential anomalies. And of course, ac uh, further actions can be taken um, by performing this analysis. So uh, this is the end of my tutorial on, uh, on my review session on anomaly detection using deep ant. And all of the links that um, have been used for preparing these notebook have been provided here. Please make sure to go through these links and post questions on Piazza if any. Thank you.